I want to transition into another topic that I think is, is really at the crux of the youth sports conversation today, which is the balance between competition and development, right? And I think at times they overlap, but I also think at times the adults, I'll put myself in that category, we parents slash coaches, we view them as two separate things. So, you know, for example, everyone wants their kid to be on the best team, right? They want to go to the best tournaments and they want to be noticed and seen and whatnot. But oftentimes those teams approaches, we just need to acquire the best talent. And if your child is not good enough, the next tryout, we're just going to replace them. I'm kind of on the more of the middle ground where it's like, once I get you, I need to develop everybody. Right. So to me, the, the role of a youth coach is to win as a result of doing things the right way, which number one is getting these kids to improve, getting them to learn. So like when on that spectrum of the, com- the competition winning at all costs and then at the grassroots level of just introducing basic skills and young development, you know, the rec, the church league, that kind of level. There's a lot of ways in between to cut this. So like where are you guys philosophically on that spectrum as far as like finding ways to, yes, we want kids to compete. We want them to learn to win and and go out, but we also need to teach them the skills and teach them the foundational level movements and skill sets that they can keep with them as they grow older and hopefully continue playing, you know, whatever sport it is. Yeah, we've, it's, it's a tough challenge because kids develop at different ages, you know, and we see it all the time. You get a kid who's 10 years old and is the fastest player on the field, scoring all the goals. It's the go-to person. You know, her teammates will pass her the ball all the time. By the time the kid gets to 15, you know, he or she is basically at the same speed, but everybody else has developed in a different manner and have moved beyond it. So you have to be able to almost temper the actual pathway to be able to best suit the player. So what that means is as much as our competitive side is really strong, I mean, we have a national league, it's 13 conferences, 120,000 players, you know, that play all year round. We know that that's a pretty solid system where you really need to focus is back at the recreational level, because there are kids that are 10, 12, maybe even 14, that the light hasn't turned on yet. But in many sports, and soccer being one, if you're at that level of recreational play, the number of chances you have starts to diminish to where you're almost, yeah, I'd said this earlier, you know, you're just a rec player. And so you get that into your psyche that you're not playing with your friends, you're not good enough to travel, I'm not really having fun, I'm going to go somewhere else. And so we need to create alternative programming. And from my perspective, you know, being able to find, you know, 3v3, 5v5, so your small sided games so that you're not in that same box. You're practicing a couple of times a week. You're playing 11-11 on the weekends. But if you're playing, you're still out there playing and developing, maybe when you get to 15 or 16 and we're starting to see it, kids that just are playing for fun, the light goes on and suddenly now they're starring at their high school level. And so we need to be able to complement the, the, the more um, elite level of programming with really strong recreational programming so that they come together and there is that easy path so that if you de- develop later in life, you still feel like you can belong. 